Welcome everyone to another episode of BBC with the Shrike Ultra. And what we're going to touch bases on really quickly is where we're at. Now we're really close to getting this thing on the ground and getting it assembled. But what I wanted to touch bases on is a few different things. Manufacturing processes. We're going to go over those really quickly. Now these blades are obviously 3D printed. PETG. Now we, I know that the... Um, they can handle 5,000 RPMs as of now because I have tested them at that RPM. When the ESCs that I plan on using come in, and those are MAD Components 120 amp ESCs at 18S, that's what's running this system. And the reason why is because we're using 7070 Flipsky or Flipsky motors that are 75 volts and they're 100 amps. So, perfect combo. For 9,000 RPMs, which is incidentally the RPMs I need for acceleration. This has a very, very high thrust to weight ratio. Um, I'd have to run the math, but it has 472 pounds of thrust and it's coming in at 70 pounds total with all the hardware that I am using. And it has been printed on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 28 kilograms of PETG with one nozzle and almost no malfunctions whatsoever except for the occasional oops I forgot to put a little bit of you know glue on the bed so uh, you know something came loose <laughs> small stuff like that uh, other than that it ran perfectly now the idea is I would love ultimately to see and see this stuff out of 7075 aluminum which includes the blade, the hub itself, center shaft, which actually would disappear in the aluminum version. And then, of course, on the bottom side, you have the rest of the shaft, the collet right here, the main stator hub. I, I want to alloy that. Now, the rest of this, there's no reason why it can't be 3D printed or carbon fiber. Um, that's, why I, I, that's what I love about this sort of amalgamation of uh, materials. The question is, what machine will it be? Will it be the Pinta Pocket NC, which is the only one that I can see that can actually mill this blade for me? Or will it be the Carvera, which I know on its fourth axis cannot do this. This is too big. Uh, on the bed it can. But those two machines working together, I could print holding fixtures for the stock for this material for the pocket and see and it would work perfectly so i plan on using the uh those two machines if i can get them um it, it may take a little while that way when version two does come out it'll be it'll have that aluminum it'll be black you know petg carbon fiber cowlings and things like that and duct work and uh, there'll be a, a few small changes to the overall operation of the vehicle um now the power system that I'm currently going to be doing the prototype uh, or the, the Maiden on with this prototype is going to be three of those Z 10,000 milliamp 120C lipos. Those are really, really good batteries. And what I want to make sure works is the power distribution board, which in this case is going to be two bus bars that uh, are close to 75 volts or 60 volts but they can handle 600 amps so i think they'll be all right with the 75 volts because there is no power distribution board that i've been able to find for a drone like this on in the drone market they just don't exist that's all there is to it so i have to make my own the flight controller is a speedy b f405 wing the latest version haven't bought it yet i have a couple I have a couple old ones here, but um, I'm not gonna use them. I wanted to start fresh, get some new ones. Um, but they work out good, unless anyone can suggest a different flight controller that they think will work better for a drone this size and the fact that they are EDFs. That's a big thing. So what we're gonna end up discussing right now is not only the components that I want to get done in the alloy but the whole power system so just hang on one second we're going to get right into that right now 
kind of turn down the lighting a little bit for you so you can see what was going on before we got into the power system. This is really cool, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> play. I had to do it. Um, okay. So, what I think I'm going to need next, besides the electronics, we know the MAD components, uh, ESCs, we know we're going to use a speedy flight controller, we know we're going to use the Flipski or Flipsky 7070 motors, we know that we're going to be using uh, Arduino for the lighting. I'm running out of Arduino Uno at this point, probably could run a Nano. I do have a bus bar over there so I can run a power system for the lights for the entire rig. Um, but what we want to focus on at this point is what do you think is the best machine for this? I think if I had a Carvera that I could easily develop the fixtures that I need to, to mill this blade on the Penta Pocket NC. I am actually excited to get the, the Pocket NC if I can get one. I am totally excited about that one because I know I can get a lot done with it. And it will help me change the design a little bit. I'll be able to change the design to simplify it a little bit more because remember everything, I knew it was going to be 3D printed so the design followed along those lines. This is what I know I have to deal with. These are my extrusions. You know, I know I'm going to have 0 0.2 on either side of the actual model line. So I got to, you know, compensate for that. The way the main shaft is assembled. All of that stuff was based on the fact that I, um, the machine I was working with. So you have, you have to know the equipment you have. And then that's how you design your system. Now, I did use the MPCNC to mill out the heat sinks that I'm putting on the top of the outrunners, which is going to help keep the whole system cool. But ultimately... The idea is CNC. I'm looking for a good desktop CNC. I would love to have both. Carreras and Pintas. Or, or Makiras and Pintas. Um, CNC machine. Because I, I, I've i got to have a good desktop CNC solution that works with Fusion 360, which is what I've been using. And I've got to make sure that... Um, the main drive system is alloyed even if the rest of this like i said maintains either 3d printing or carbon fiber in the future we still want to make sure that the main drive system is alloy that's the whole goal so that's what we're going to go for are those machines so that we can see the see and see this thing out proper and it'll be able to handle the load that i'm going to put on the system Power distribution boards, like I said, do not exist for this. At least I'm unaware of any. So we're going with a bus bar and a common ground. That will run all four ESCs. The lighting system will be separate from the main power system. The power supply that actually runs the controller, the flight controller itself, will actually be on a separate battery outside of the power system for that. I will have telemetry from that so I know how much battery power I have left so I can safely land because the last thing you want is a five foot drone that weighs 70 pounds falling out of the sky <laughs> so I hope you all understand where it is I'm coming from as far as how this thing has been created how it's going to be created again in the future and how I'm kind of hoping I can get some better equipment in here to take care of this now my flight control system is ELRS 2.4 and I'm using a TX 16S which by the way is awesome I love it radio master great radio I'm using a 2.4 gigahertz I think it's the EV, EVP V3 <laughs> I think I could be saying it wrong that's the 2.4 gigahertz transmitter that I am using or receiver that I'm using and then of course the TX 16S transmitter uh, very comprehensive radio, easy to use, easy to assign switches in iNav, very, very versatile. Love it. Um, so, other than that, our next steps. Assembly on the floor, wire up the lights, get the carbon fiber rods in place, set up my power rack, start installing components. Mad 
components ESCs 70 70 motors from flip ski flip sky I don't know if I'm saying it right because I don't ride e-skateboards <laughs> but your motors come in handy they're great um, we got to get this thing assembled that's a that's what's up next I got a little bit of very little printing left to do like I said just the bottom half of that thing right there and that's it and we're done and then we can put this thing on the floor after I get the lighting put into these engines here and uh, the, the lighting is already in both of those engines and then the landing feet and we're good to go so that's the whole plan at this point sorry about the noise I got huskies so I hope you are all gonna stick around and watch that happen because this is gonna be awesome the, the maiden for this is gonna happen I want to say pretty soon, but it's going to take me some time to get the rest of this stuff put together. It, I don't want to rush into it. Okay, because remember, it's all 3D printed, pretty much. <laughs> the, the entire thing. So, don't want to rush it. I do have epoxy. I do have uh, fiberglass tape so I can make sure that everything is reinforced. That's going to handle the weight. But most of the weight, like I said, is in the motors. And the rest of the weight will be in just the flight control deck and the batteries which isn't going to be a lot so it's going to be fairly well balanced so stick around for that you don't want to miss that and i hope to see you all in the next one because this is going to be fun don't miss it